Once upon a time, there lived a man and his wife. Their only wish was to have a baby. One day, the wife told the husband, My love, <coughs> our wish has come true. I am expecting a baby, and we will be parents soon. <coughs> the husband was thrilled of the news, but noticed his dear wife coughing. My dear wife, you must take care of your health while you are expecting a baby. Your cough concerns me. I'm going to go to the Forbidden Garden to bring back some Rapunzel leaves for you to eat. These leaves do wonders for a cough. <laughs> this will be wonderful, my love. But do be careful. <laughs> There's a wicked witch who lives in the house, and she won't take kindly to strangers being in her garden. <laughs> don't be afraid. I don't believe in witches. I'm sure it's just an old lady who lives all alone. I'll knock on her door to ask permission before entering the garden. And off he went. He was a bit skeptical, as the house looked a bit, well, creepy. There was a fence around the house and garden. He came upon the gate that opened to the healing garden and bravely entered and knocked on the door. you could enter through the gate. I am a woman of many powers. If I wanted to, I could turn you into a big fat pig with just a flick of my wand. Now what is your business here? Oh, Mrs. Witch, please be kind. My wife, we are expecting our first child, and she's coughing all day and all night. I was told your lettuce in the garden heals a nasty cough. Why, yes, that lettuce is called Rapunzel leaves, and it has healing powers. I will make you an offer too good to pass up. I'm listening. Please, help us. There, there. <coughs> Not to worry. Your wife is very sick. She may not make it through the night. What can we do? Please help us. I'll give you a basket filled with Rapunzel leaves that will heal her deadly cough. <coughs> In return, I want the child to raise and care for her as though she's mine. She will live safely here with me for years and years to come. And your wife will be healed. You two leave this land and start a new life. Somewhere far, far away. Is that understood? The husband gazes out at the garden of healing Rapunzel leaves, stares in the crystal ball of his dying wife, and decides to accept the Wicked Witch's offer. The wife chomps on the healing lettuce leaves, and her cough disappeared. She had a healthy baby girl, who they named Rapunzel. Late that night, the couple left the baby at the doorstep of the witch's house and walked sadly away from their daughter forever. When the young girl was 12 years old, the wicked witch licked her wand and in the middle of the woods, away from everyone, appeared a tall tower. Now, this tower had no door nor steps to lead up or down. Just a small window for the young girl to look out at the world that would never be hers. It was in this tower Rapunzel would stay alone for years. Rapunzel grew to be the most beautiful girl in the world. Her blonde hair was so long and silky. Her eyes were as blue as the ocean and her heart was as kind as her long-lost mother's. The wicked old witch visited Rapunzel once in a while, and when she did, she would stand at the base of the tower and call, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Whenever the girl would hear her, she would slowly drop her hair down, and that wicked old hag would climb up to see her. Why do you come to see me? 
To make sure you are staying put, doing as you're told, being my prisoner until the end of time. <laughs> Your misery brings me joy. <laughs> you have no heart and no soul to trap me up here away from all the goodness in life. That's just so cruel. Shut your mouth. You have no right to speak to me. You speak only when I give you permission. Whenever you're feeling like you want to leave the tower, remember one thing. Your life belongs to me. Whether you sleep, dream, eat, laugh, sing, anything, you belong in the tower forever for me. <laughs> Whenever you're laughing, it's only for a moment. Your joy means nothing. Your life belongs to me. Whether you sleep, dream, eat, laugh, sing, anything, you belong in the tower forever for me. <laughs> you belong in this tower forever. <laughs> and with that, the witch disappears and leaves Rapunzel all alone to dream about being free one day. Will I ever fall in love up here and meet my prince, my love, my dear? I'll never find him if I'm all alone in this tower. Will she ever let me run free To be the woman I'm supposed to be? How can I ever find love alone in this tower? I guess I never will Rapunzel, don't give up hope <laughs> It's me, Pippi the fairy, I'm here to say Believe in yourself, be brave <laughs> Tomorrow is coming, it's gonna be a new day Tomorrow is coming, it's gonna be a new day Woo! I don't know what I would do in this situation First of all, I'm afraid of heights I mean, being up there at the top of the tower is frightful And to make matters worse She's got to drop her hair down so that wicked old bat can climb up her hair? <sighs> Let's get back to the story. One day, there was a prince riding on his horse through the woods. He suddenly heard a girl's beautiful voice singing. Will I ever fall the handsome prince made his way to where the singing was coming from and hid behind a tree. Standing close by the tower, he was shocked and saddened by what he heard and saw. Here was an old ugly witch who screamed, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. All at once, a beautiful girl appeared in a window high in the tower. She lowered her long golden braided hair to the witch below. The old witch climbed the hair, all the while shrieking horrible insults and threats. The witch disappeared in the high tower window with the beautiful girl. One night, the prince decided he would go to the tower to catch a glimpse of the beautiful girl. Their eyes met each other's, and the prince spoke. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. You're here, my prince, my love, my dear. You've come to save me. Now I can be free? She let down her hair, and he climbed up to see her. Rapunzel, don't give up hope. <laughs> it's me, Pippi the fairy, I'm here to say. Believe in yourself, be brave. <laughs> Tomorrow is coming, it's gonna be a new day. Tomorrow is coming, it's gonna be a new day. You must leave now. The wicked witch, who calls herself my mother, will be here soon. You must return to me tomorrow and take me with you. 
You have my word. We will be together soon. I will rescue you from this lonely tower. We shall be married and live our lives happily without the heartache and torment of that wicked old witch. Ah, I love love stories. A prince coming to the rescue, castles and fairies, kings and queens, beautiful dresses and long flowing hair. Ugh. Why do these fairy tales have to have a dumb old witch coming in and messing everything up? Huh? Ugh. Let's get back to the story. The next day, the witch came to the base of the tower, as she always did. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Oh, yeah, you're so stupid. Get me up here fast. Pull me up faster, you dummy. Why is it you take so long to get up to me? My hair is strong. You should be able to climb up fast. My loving prince climbs up so fast. Why are you so slow? This infuriated the wicked witch. You have betrayed me. You haven't been up here all alone. I shall fix that, you good-for-nothing brat. <laughs> <laughs> now when your little princey poo calls, he's going to get the surprise of his life. <laughs> you cut my hair. You destroyed my childhood. You took my parents from me. You left me up here all alone. But there is one thing you can't have. And what's that, little Miss Priss? You can't take my heart. My heart belongs to my love, my prince, my dear. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. <laughs> You came for your darling? But the beautiful little singing bird sings no more. She's gone. And I'll never tell you where I've put her. <laughs> the prince was devastated, so upset, heartbroken, really. He jumped out of the tower and landed in a bush of thorns that blinded him. He was alive but blind. Poor, poor prince. One night, something magical happened. Rapunzel's dear friend, Pippi the fairy, appeared to her and spoke some magic words. One, two, three flitters of my wings. Hurry, hurry, a magic ladder appears only for a minute. Escape, my sweet Rapunzel. The prince wandered through the woods for years, blind and heartbroken over the loss of his true love. Until one day, he thought he heard her singing. Will I ever fall in love up here and meet my prince, my love, my dear? I'll never find him. It is you! It is you! My love! I have finally found you. Your lovely voice I hear, but sadly I cannot see. I have a garden of rambian leaves. These leaves have great healing powers. You will eat these leaves, and you will see again. Whoa! What a story! Who knows where that wicked old witch ended up? To tell you the truth, I hope she was burned by the breath of a fiery dragon. The prince took Rapunzel to his kingdom, where they married and lived happily ever after. The castle was so beautiful. And guess what? It even had a garden in the back filled with Rapunzel leaves. 
<laughs> Thank you for joining me here on Ruby Storytime. I hope you enjoyed the story. See you next time, friends. Once upon a time, there lived a little boy named Jack. Oh, he was a darling little boy, and he loved his mother very much. His mother would always say, Jack, you are such a good boy. You always think of others before you think of yourself. I do my best, Mom. Before Dad passed away, he always told me to be respectful to people, help out when I can, and whatever happens, make sure I take good care of you. And you do, son. You do. Now, go on outside and ask old Bess if she has any milk for us. We need the milk to make the bread, or we won't have anything to eat. Times are hard right now. We barely have any money, and if I don't have milk to make the bread, we will surely starve. Right away, Mother. Hi, old Bess. Well, hello there, Jack. Do you have any milk for us today? Mother really needs some. Oh, poor boy. I'm sorry to say, I have no milk to give to you today. Oh, that's okay. I'll check with you tomorrow. Have a good day, old Bess. Well, several days passed by, and old Bess still had no milk to give. It's not that she didn't want to give any milk. She was just getting up in the years, growing old and tired, as each day passed. Jack, we are hungry, and we have no food in the cabinets. As hard as it is, you must take old Bess into town and sell her. It is our only hope to live. And with that, Jack and his good friend old Bess began walking down the dirt road hoping to make it to town before nightfall. I'm gonna miss you, Bess And I don't know how to tell you this Mother said times are hard right now We have to sell you for money <laughs> I'm gonna miss you oh Bess and I don't know how to tell you this mother said times are hard right now we have to sell you for money There, there, you two. No need to cry. I've heard everything, and I'm here to help. Listen, Jack, you give me old bus, and I will give you three magical beans. You go home and plant the seeds, and let me tell you what. In the morning, you won't believe your eyes. There will be a great big beanstalk that goes right up to the sky. <laughs> and in the sky, you will find magic that will take care of you and your mother for a very long time. Jack said goodbye to old Bess, pocketed the three magic beans, and headed home to tell his mother of the good news. Look, mother, our, our troubles will be over now. I traded old Bess for three magical beans. And if we plant them, there will be a big... What? Jack, how could you do such a silly thing? I told you we needed money. We need food to eat. Can you bring back three little beans? <laughs> Go to your room, son. 
we will surely starve to death. Jack went to his room. He was very sorry for what he had done. How could he have thought three beans would take care of his mother and himself? He was so mad at himself that he threw those silly beans out the window and cried himself to sleep. I'm gonna miss you, oh yes, and I don't know how to tell you this. Mother said times are hard, right now we have to sell you for money. <laughs> poor, poor <laughs> Jack. Holy moly! That little old funny fella was right! A magical beanstalk that stands as tall as the sky! Jack runs toward the castle with a spring in his step. He is so excited that his decision to trade in Old Bess was actually a good one, right? Not so fast. Jack was frightened. Don't be afraid. I'm sure you are very hungry after climbing the beanstalk and running all the way here to our castle. Let me fix you a bowl of cereal. Do you like giant flakes? You see that? Just because someone looks a little scary doesn't mean they actually are, right? I mean, one time I ran into the closet door and broke my nose. It swelled up so big you would have thought my whole face was just one big nose. It was... Oh, let's get back to the story. Oh, no! Quick boy, jump in this copper pot. He surely won't find you in here. My husband's favorite food is... Chocolate ice cream? Pizza? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich? His favorite food is... Little boys served on toast! <gasps> Get in the pot and keep quiet! I am so hungry! I could eat three camels! <sighs> what is that I smell? Hey, from I smell the blood of an English one. Be he alive or be he dead, I'm gonna eat him on my bread. Oh, my dear giant husband, you are just too cute. There is no boy here. Now go, practice your flute. Listen to me, little white hen. Lay me another golden egg, and don't make me tell you again. <laughs> I'm tired. I need the golden harp to play me a lullaby. Harp, harp, play me a song. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. And while you're at it, fetch me my blankie. Jack knew he had to get out of the house before he became the giant's breakfast. But he couldn't help but feel sorry for the little white hen and the beautiful golden harp. So, Jack carefully crept through the whole house and took the hen in the basket and went over to the harp and carried them away. But just as he was about to leave, the little white hen let out a cackle wackle what a do Oh! Jack ran out of the house as fast as he could, with the hen in the basket and the harp playing fantastic. 
Come on, hurry, friends. We will be free from the giant if we can get down that beanstalk safely. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I will have the boy and the hen and the harp for lunch on my bread. He sounds like a tough guy, doesn't he? Well, guess what, friends? This big hungry giant was afraid of heights. Mm-hmm, that's right. The moment he looked at the beanstalk and saw how far he had to make it down to the bottom, he started crying like a little baby giant. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming. If I have to take baby steps to get there, I'm coming to eat you. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! You're making the beanstalk shake. <laughs> Jack takes one more giant whack at the beanstalk, <gasps> and wouldn't you know it? The giant fell down and broke his crown. And the beanstalk came crashing down, too. And that was the end of the giant. I'm gonna miss you, oh, Bess. And I don't know how to tell you this. Mother said times are hard right now we have to sell you for money. Money. money You saved our lives Thank you, Jack To show you our appreciation I will lay you a golden egg every day So you can buy food and never go hungry again And with all the money from the golden eggs Jack was able to buy back his dear friend, Obis. Jack, his mother, the beautiful harp, the little white hen, and his good friend, Old Bess, lived happily ever after. Woo! What a story! Thanks for joining me, friends, for the magical story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Now, if you will excuse me, I need to get back to work at paying my bills. Right after I drink a big glass of milk, provided by my good friend, Old Bess.